So, ito na. Okay, Stephen Krashen, yung monitor model niya. So, there are different, okay, five different types. First type is yung input hypothesis. Namahala yung bosses ko. Please, wag tonight. So, input hypothesis. So, dito, I plus one. So, yung I, so, ano yung alam mo na already about the language? Plus one is the next stage na matututunan mo pa. Okay? So, I is what you already know. Plus one is yung ano pa yung matututunan mo. Kaya nga, di ba, when we're learning a language, hindi naman pwede na grade one pa lang tayo eh. Okay, yan na yung present, uh, perfect present progressive or present perfect progressive tense. Di ba? Didiretso ka ba doon sa tenses? No. You will start with simple tenses muna, simple sentences, no? So, so uh, we will still learn the past, present, future. So, kapag alam mo na, so yan na yung I. And then proceed naman sa next level. So, yan yung plus one, okay? Input hypothesis. So, acquisition learning hypothesis naman. Actually, I had to learn, I had to study hard about this para ma-explain ko ng tama. Teachers cannot pour from an empty cup. You cannot teach what you don't know. So, yeah, I had to put extra effort. But anyway, kasi nahirapan ako dito sa acquisition learning hypothesis eh. So, anyway, if you say acquisition, so that's when you learn a language that happens informally. So, for example, sa bahay, di ba? We just learn. Or for example, sa kakapanood mo na Harry Potter, eh, you know, subconsciously, na-acquire na mo ang British accent nila. Give you some water, right? So that's, yeah, acquisition. Yung learning naman, it's yung formal. Yung sa school, talagang nag-training ka kung paano mag-British accent, okay? So that's the difference between acquisition and the learning hypothesis, okay? Next one is the monitor hypothesis. Okay, sobrang dami nito. Okay. So, consciously learn language and can only be used to monitor language output. So, ano yung natutunan mo, dyan lang siya mag-re-revolve mag yung assessment. So, for example, yung kay Teacher D, di ba? So, pinapanood niya yung clip. So, doon lang. Doon lang siya mag-re-focus. Mag, 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 ano, ano, doon lang siya mag-focus or mag-concentrate. Okay? So, again, input hypothesis. Okay? It's, it's the level. I is I plus one. I is what you know. Plus one is the next level, okay? Acquisition, subconscious. Learning naman, conscious. Monitor hypothesis, it revolves with what you already know. Let me move to the next step. Natural order hypothesis. So language is acquired in a particular order. So this is also believed. So of course, you learn first with ano yun, babbling, crying, and then... Later on, yung bata is makakatuto siya ng one words, mama, papa, drink, eat, hungry, hanggang sa slow, slowly, nagiging sentences na, nagiging complete yung sentences niya. So, yan yung belief ng natural order. I don't know, but ano, ilan yung edad na Rizal before siya nakapagsulat ng first poem? Eh, kasi sila sobrang talino nila, diba? so siguro hindi siya nag-follow ng natural order hypothesis. Just for us normal people, of course, di ba? Some people are just so smart, you know. Sobrang dami ng alam na language at a very young age. So, I'm not sure. Anyway, next one, affective filter. So, mostly, this is sa inside, okay? So, for example, um, <laughs> ako, when I was in high school, I actually memorized the Japanese alphabet, yung katakana and hiragana. And why is that? It's because meron akong Japanese idol. Na idol na idol ko talaga until now. So that's more of the learning a language, more of the affective filter. So namamotivate ako to learn because of my idol. I'm sure some of you are BTS fans and you're learning Korean. I have friends kung kausapin mo na ka-imnida imnida na. So I don't understand. But it's more of the affective side kasi gusto nila. Or siguro yung jowa mo is English, the ba? English man. So, <laughs> you're motivated to learn the English accent. So, it affects how an individual acquires a language, okay? Mas more on the inside siya. Alright, so, that's it. <laughs>
So the monitoring model of Stephen Krashen. Whew, that was a long one. <laughs> okay, let's try. Okay, this is the board exam tip. The answer is in the question. Again, the answer is in the question. Again, paulit-ulit yung sinasabi, yung makakapanalo sa inyo is the way you analyze. So analyze the question well. So sa question pa lang, ma-detect mo na kung, okay, what, what is it talking about? So it's important talaga, bago ka sumagot, please understand the question first. Kaya nga also, uh, super beneficial yung mga major in English, yung mga galing sa English, kasi most of the questions are in English. Prof Ed, um, ano ba, science, math, in English sila. So if you're good at the language already, so you have a higher chances na, you have a higher chance na mas maiintindihan mo yung tanong. Okay? So again, the answer is in the question. Just analyze really, really well. Okay. And natapos na natin explanation. Let's go back to your side. It's your turn to answer. So in which class is CLIL? Practice. I will tell you what CLIL later, okay? Sometimes, PRC, it's like that. Hindi kami nibigyan ng definition, okay? Just acronyms that tawag dito. So that's what they will give you. Yeah, acronyms. Ano ba? Why am I? Okay, acronyms. So, anyway, in which class is CLIL practice? Let's have the options, letter A. The class visited a charity organization and prepared some questions for the interview. Letter B, the teacher used graphic organizers and diagrams to aid learning. Letter C, the class visited a museum in order to create a brochure promoting local tourism. Or letter D, the teacher prepared a real-life task to evaluate student performance. So, comment your answers. All right, it's letter B. So. C-L-I-L. Let me go back to the options. Huh? So, here, letter A, bucket odd one out. So, if you see letter A, the class visited charity organization and prepared some questions for interview. It's an about the task-based, right? Authentic performance in letter A. Letter C, naman, the class visited a museum to create a brochure, another authentic, another authentic activity, right? Or task-based. And letter D, the teacher prepared a real-life task, mas lalong authentic. So A, C, and D are all task-based. Letter B is the only one that looks different. At bakit naman ito naging content and language integrated learning? So yung teacher gumamit siya na different approach, di ba? So graphic organizers and diagrams. So ini-integrate niya yung language, not just by solely learning the language, but also through another context or in another way. So the answer is letter B. Okay, next one. Ah, nandito na nga. So this means studying another subject and learning a language such as English at the same time. So integrating two subjects. Let's proceed. Oh, I've always added this one. Because this is how the questions actually look like. So, need talaga yung analysis mo. Anyway, um, I've repeated this so many times. I hope you get it. A student shows disinterest in oral recitation since he had received jeers for pronouncing words incorrectly, such as chocolate for chocolate. What could be the cause of, his, of this problem in speaking? Is it the learner was disappointed? There is L1 interference. He felt embarrassed or he had grammatical problems. He's embarrassed, but most of the answers to one are letter B. So let me give a rationalization to that. Okay. Again, understand the question. Okay. What could be the cause of this problem in speaking? So sa speaking na problem niya. So wag magpadala sa emotion na na nahiya siya dahil okay pinagtawanan siya. So problem in speaking yung pinag-usapan natin. Bakit na instead of saying chocolate, naging chocolate yung pronunciation niya. So it's because of the L1 interference, okay? So if you say L1 interference, it's the speaker's mother tongue, okay? The speaker's mother tongue or 
uh, yung first language ng speaker. So for example, kapag tinanong tayo dito sa, you know, bakit matigas yung English natin, it's because, lalo na yung mga Bisaya, matigas yung Tagalog naman. It's, you know, Elwan, it's your friends. Anyway, that's not our first language. Diba? So Japanese, Korean people, they have, ano yan, they have English, they have their own accent. Even, ang mas visible talaga na accent is yung Indian accent. I have a classmate, sobrang galing mag-Indian accent. The littles are dancing. So like that. So it's all one friends. So, nag interfere yung first language ng speaker. Okay? Stylistics is defined as, I think you've met this one pretty often. Ano yung ibig sabihin ng stylistics? Is that literary teaching and learning involves an active mental process, a study of the brain mechanism that underlies linguistic competence and performance, letter C, the appropriateness of a word, intended subject, genre, and audience, or letter D, a study of a literary discourse from a linguistic orientation. Comment your answers. This one. So I'm super excited that you guys will also have your service. So I wore red. Diba? Pati sa license, nag-red ako. No, it was because of the filing. So no choice ako eh. Yun yung nasuot ko. And I'm so excited. Soon, you guys will be able to have this one. Ano mo bang iba yung nasa wallet ko? Pera lang talaga yung wala dito. <laughs> I don't use ca- cash that much pretty often. Para makasave. And yeah, that's only that. I'm so excited for you guys to have this. Correct answer is, um, all right, it's letter D. So stylistics is a study of literary discourse from a linguistic orientation. So yung other distractors ko, they also have meanings, okay? Now let's start. So the first one, it's called the cognitive code approach. Kapag the literary teaching and learning involves a lot of Active mental process. So, cognitive code yon. Yung a study of the brain mechanism naman that is neuro-linguistic. So, okay, when you want to know kung gano'ng kakagaling, because kanino nga yung multiple intelligences, that's Howard Gardner, right? Like, some people, or like, yeah, different people have different intelligences. So, yung iba magaling sa music and aesthetic. So, yung iba naman, logical. Meron ding iba na, linguistic. So, yung mga, they, they can speak multiple languages. So, yeah, maybe with neurolinguistics, sobrang ganda ng results nila. Anyway, if you say the appropriateness of a word, intended subject, genre, or audience, yung letter C, that is diction, okay? And letter D naman, that's the answer, stylistics. A study of literary discourse from a linguistic orientation. And that was it. <laughs> okay, very well. All right, so which outcome in remedial instruction in English is generally important? Is it A, resolution of communication problems? B, variety of learning experiences? C, positive experience in language literature learning? Or D, participate in, participate in learning experiences? Comment your answers. So, resolution of communication problems. Una sa lahat, bakit ka ba magpaparimedial teacher? Right? It's because that student failed or did not reach the objective of that specific area. So, you're trying to, okay, remediate it. So, binibigyan mo ng remedial instruction. So, hopefully, the result or yung outcome niya is mabibigyan ng resolution kung ano man yung part na, na fail siya. Okay? So, remedial instruction Resolution of communication problems. Lahat dito naman is tama. They're correct. But you need to find the best answer. Okay? So it's letter A. Next one. Again, yung magpapapasa sa inyo, your skill in analyzing. Now, the instructor employed the instructor employed a strategy for learning English that involves having face-to-face interactions with native English speakers. What approach is it? Is it direct method, immersion, transition, or audio oral? Comment your answers. Okay, let me see. All right, so correct. Is it direct method or immersion? So it is actually immersion, okay? 
So direct method, I will teach you later what is that. But for now, let me give you this one. So immersion is learning a language in the most authentic and natural way possible. Kaya nga merong native English speaker, di ba? So you are immersed in the experience. That's why it's called immersion. Next one, to learn complex subject matter, it is most effective to experience from information and is it classify facts, organize ideas, construct meaning, or divide elements? Correct answer is construct meaning. Construct meaning. So complex na siya, it means higher level, higher level, okay? So classify, organize, or divide, you don't need that much. Of, it's not that complex, diba? So the answer is in the question, okay? Complex subject matter, it is most effective to experience it from information and Construct meaning. Letter C is the correct answer. Good job. So, this one. Which language learning approach is employed when practice drills are action-based? This approach emphasizes the value of kinesthetic learning and auditory understanding. Is it audio-oral, direct method, total physical response, or task-based language teaching? Comment your answers. So, here, yung keyword natin is, okay, kinesthetic and auditory. Kinesthetic and auditory. So, kinesthetic, it's your body. Auditory is what you hear. So, very often, an example ko is when you say, stand up. So, pagka rinig ng bata na stand up, and then tumayo din siya. So, that's auditory and kinesthetic, okay? When you say, sit down, so, naka Okay, the child heard the words sit down at umupo din siya. So, total physical response or TPR. Yes! On, okay, kinesthetic and auditory. Sometimes oral yung word dyan. A-U-R-A-L, okay? Oral, that's also auditory. Yung oral na O naman, it's iba rin yun, okay? That's spoken. So, oral na A-U, that's also auditory, okay? Olfactory, you're familiar with that vocabulary or that word? That's for the uh, smelling, I think. Let me see, olfactory. Yeah, sense of smell. So anyway, oral na AU, it's auditory. So correct answer natin is total physical response. So, ito na yung different methods in learning a language. Direct method, it's the natural method. So focuses on the development of oral skills. So I think very common, this is very commonly done talaga in schools. So you're taught the words, sounds of letters, and so on. That's direct method. Communicative, lang, communicative, I don't know where the stress should be. Communicative, communicative, but anyway, CLT na lang. Focuses on interaction. Kasi, na, kasi nga from the word communicate, di ba? Interact. Grammar translation among focuses on translation of text, grammar, and the rote learning of vocabulary. So I think grammar translation, it's not that complex to understand because it focuses on grammar, okay? So classical method focuses on translation of texts. Next, audiolingual should be taught the language directly without the use of the student's native language. So, yun yung kaibahan ng direct method sa audiolingual. In direct method kasi, you can use, uh, in direct method, you can use, ano ba? Uh, the, the, you, for example, kapag tinuruan ka ng letters, I mean, we can still speak Bisaya or Tagalog, diba? but audiolingual, you cannot use the student's native language. So, mostly, imitation, repetitions, and drills. So TPR, yun yung action-based drills, yun yung answer. Cognitive code involves an active mental process. And we have this one, counseling learning approach. So an interactive process in which they are able to say how they feel. So counseling learning is usually affective, okay? More on the emotional part. Task-based naman. It's the authentic or real life. Okay, so mamaya, I think I will have another example for task-based. But so far, that's it. So, okay, this was the really good tip. So kanina, I, I 
gave a tip on how to eliminate so you question all the choices diba another thing don't answer unless you have last two remaining options okay don't answer unless you have last two remaining options so if you can see kasi um there are four a b c d yon diba you have 25% chance of getting the right answer so if you you have to make it 50% chance dapat dalawa yung last or dapat dalawa na lang yung options mo bago ka sumagot which means dapat na eliminate mo na yung other two dapat na eliminate mo na yung other two before you choose the correct answer so with that you have 50% chance of having or of yeah choosing the correct answer so don't answer unless you have last two remaining options okay so this is a really good tip to help you analyze more and see to it na gagawin mo yan in every item in every item mapa gen ed man prof ed or major do it in every item wag kang sumagot unless dalawa na lang yung natitira mong options okay wag dire diretso na ah okay that's the question what is the blah blah blah, blah? ah okay let's see no analyze first okay analyze first so it's yeah that, that's the tip anyway let's try this one what is the highest level of comprehension is it literal comprehension critical evaluation critical comprehension or integration comment your answers so here highest level of comprehension is critical evaluation guys you know bakit ba yung for example kapag may competition bakit ba yung mga judge e puro magagaling how do they know na magagaling sila bakit magagaling yung mga judge it's because they're able to judge well if maganda ba yung performance or hindi they're able to evaluate well ibig sabihin na intindihan na nila entirely about that field so that is the highest level of comprehension okay it's the ability to evaluate so here for example i have ito yung always kong example of kung muna akin flashlight okay so i have two phones <laughs> will have a ring light in the office i have two phones here so ano ba yung function ng phone so i know it it can text and it can call diba i know na may camera siya may time calendar it can be used for entertainment i know that one uh, alam ko rin kung paano siya gamitin and then application naman is okay i used it so na i use it for chatting i use it for watching movies listening to music i use it that's application now for evaluation alin ba dito yung mas gusto ko alin ba dito yung mas mahal alin ba dito yung ano yun yung yung processing niya is mas mabilis alin ba dito yung maganda yung internet connection alin ba dito yung ganito ganito so i'm already able to give worth or value so ibig sabihin i am able to understand it completely okay so kapag sobrang galing mo na diba you 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 can judge it correctly so that's evaluation okay so that's why it's just right that the highest level of comprehension really is okay critical evaluation um which type of listening comprehension refers to the ability to listen only to specific parts is it listening selectively listening for gist listening attentively or listening for details comment your answers specific parts specific parts specific parts you are left with <laughs> you are left with letters a or d diba if you say listening for gist it's not it's, it doesn't really relate and then listening attentively okay it's necessary but it doesn't pertain to specific parts now let's have ano bang difference ng i'll give you an example ano bang difference ng listening selectively and listening for details so here yung tanong is specific parts so for example i am or i will be speaking about my life diba and you want to listen to specific parts so you want to listen about my childhood okay so what you will do is you will listen selectively okay you will listen selectively 
kasi sa childhood ka lang interested. You are only interested in that specific part, which is my childhood. So you will only listen in the first part. Eh, bakit mo aalamin yung college ko or no, I'm already working? It's not my childhood anymore. Di ba? If you say listening for details, you need answers to specific questions. So, kapag gusto mong malaman anong pangalan ng nanay ko, anong, yeah, kailan ako gumraduate, so that's listening select, or still listening for details. Di ba? You have specific questions. However, for listening selectively, you only listen to parts kasi dyan lang, dyan lang area. So if you want to listen to my childhood, you listen selectively, you listen to the first part only, okay? So that's like, yeah, the, the most basic um, example that I can give. Okay, so that's the difference. Listening selectively, you listen to specific parts. Details, again, you, ha- you have questions na gusto mong masagot. All right. So anyway, let's proceed. Complete the analogy. Phoneme is the single unit of sound. Ano naman yung morpheme? Is it the shortest phrase, the most important element, the smallest unit of measuring, or the simplest unit of idea? Correct answer is very well. It's the simplest unit of idea. So I did not write this tip pala. But guys, while you're, ano yun, how to eliminate is you question the choices, di ba? While you are questioning the choices, if the choices, if or if the choice is confusing, it's not the correct answer. Kapag nakakalito siya, kapag hindi klaro, it's not the correct answer, okay? So anything vague or confusing is not the correct answer. So for example, yung letters A to C, the shortest phrase, it doesn't make sense. Letter B, the most important element, also doesn't make sense. Element ng ano? The smallest unit of measuring, it doesn't make sense. The smallest unit of measuring what? What do you measure? So it also doesn't make sense, okay? So anyway, correct answer natin is letter D. So let's proceed. Oh, this one. So... We teach literature to enable our learners in understanding and appreciating ideas and cultures that are distinct from their own in terms of time and geography, as well as developing an awareness of traditions of thinking, emotion, and aesthetic expression that these civilizations' literature bestows. Wow, no man. <laughs> okay, so... Anyway, is it value, authentic material, cultural enrichment, language enrichment, or personal involvement? It's cultural enrichment. So the answer is in the question. Appreciating ideas and culture that are distinct from their own. So this is cultural enrichment. Ayun, ano ba yung iba? Now let's, let's tackle them. So kapag sinasabi mong valuable, authentic material, so learners are exposed to actual language samples of real life or real life like settings. So for example, kapag gumagamit ka ng forms, pamphlets, advertisements, newspapers, it's authentic, right? Real life, yung task based. So that's valuable authentic material. Kapag yung cultural enrichment naman, that's the answer. So, facilitate understanding on how communication takes place in that culture or in that country. So, here, um, a full colorful setting in which characters from many social regional backgrounds can be described. So, um, recently, sobrang sikat nung series, Philippine series na yung nandun si Barbie Forteza, right? So, yeah, talaga nakaka-proud sa ating history, right? So if other people or other races or other or if foreign people will watch it, so they will have like, yeah, the historical background about the Philippines, what it's like before. So tayo, lagi tayo nanonood ng K-drama. So we know ano yung outfits nila in the past, sa Joseon era, right? Or era or whatever that is, or however that is pronounced. Oh yeah, yan po. <laughs> yan, yan. So, right? Anyway, let's continue. Um, we have this next one, language. Kapag language enrichment naman yung goal mo. So, it's just really, literally about the language. So, syntax and discourse functions of the sentences. So, the variety of possible structures. 
the different ways of connecting ideas. So you develop and enrich, you improve your own skills in the language. That's language enrichment. And what's the other one? Personal involvement naman is so selection of a literary text. So in relation sa kung anong gusto mo, anong interest mo. So expectations. So yeah, it's you're on your own. So you choose a literary. It's because you like it. It's because you enjoy it. Or maybe you have your personal reasons. Okay. So again, valuable, authentic. Yung mga real life materials, uh, newspapers, magazines. So cultural enrichment naman is you learn from that culture. Okay. So what is that about? Um, language enrichment, it, literal, na you want to improve your language. So it talks about grammar and vocabularies. Personal involvement naman is more on the effective area. So you're on your own. You have your own reasons as to why you chose that literature. So anyway, correct answer is, okay, correct answer, that one is letter B, okay? Hindi pa ako nag-dinner. Guys, mag-dinner kayo, oi. Yes, well, this will be uploaded. Don't worry. You can eat dinner while watching. Now, which of the following does not embody the wash back principle? Is it letter A, a test may influence what the teachers may teach and how they teach their students? Letter B, the use of the test influences language learners. Letter C, what is tested does not affect what is taught. Or letter D, it is the correction between testing and learning. So comment your answers. So, okay. It's actually, yeah, you're all correct. It's actually letter C. Kasi does not na ngayon. Meron ding does not dito. Ano pa ba tatagalin natin? No, not, not like that, okay? Please, please, try to analyze if you can. But my point din naman. Um, here, so ano ba kasi yung washback principle? If you say washback, guys, yan yung relationship. Mabuti pa yung washback, my relationship. Kayo wala. Ha. Yung relationship ng testing tsaka yung teaching. Okay? Relationship ng assessment and yeah, the, the teaching process of the instructor. So, here, okay. Okay, what is tested affects what is taught. Okay? So, for example, um, I've used this example before. Kapag Okay, sabihin mo sa students po nga na, okay, yung final exam natin, gusto ko, you will have a, a, an oral or like a speech. Gusto ko speech yung final exam nyo. Because yung goal mo is that they will become a fluent speaker. Yan yung goal mo. So yung sinabi mo sa kanila, final exam mo, that you want them to have a speech, to actually do a speech. So, Kapag positive washback siya, okay, so kapag positive washback siya, it means yung result is, yes, nakuha mo yung objective, you know, like after the, 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 the speaking activity, they all are fluent already. So that's a really good, no? Yung resulta ng test, tsaka ng teaching process. However, it can be negative kapag yung ibang students Instead na kasi sinabihan mo mag-speech, they just memorized. So they were, they're actually not fluent kasi memorized lang nila, di ba? So by means of fluency, yung spontaneous, yung talagang magaling lang. So that was your goal. Pero yung iba is nag-memorize sila. It's because sinabi mo na, yeah, yan yung final exam. So it's a negative washback. There is a mismatch between the goals and the focus of assessment. So kahit na maging fluent sila, in a spontaneous way, in a memorize sila. So it does not match, okay? So again, it's the relationship between the teaching process and the task, okay? So yung question natin, alin dito, hindi, or does not embody the washback principle? Of course, it's letter C. What is tested does not affect what is taught. Mm -mm, it does not. Okay, it's incorrect. 